Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The multitudes came to hear the words of Jesus. The crippled and the sick came to be healed. I can see. I can see. Jesus of Nazareth, he cured a blind man. Jesus of Nazareth. And the sinners to be forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go and sin no more. They saw life restored where there was no life. Lazarus, come forth! <laughs> and food provided where there was no food. I'm sorry, there's only one. That's all we have. But they're starving. What do you mean there's only one? There's plenty. Go to Jerusalem. The whole city awaits you. No, Judas. In Jerusalem, the Son of Man will be rejected by the elders and the chief priests of the temple. He will be condemned. He will be handed over to the unbelievers who will scourge him, mock him, put him to death. Then, after three days, he will rise again. It was here, in Jerusalem, that the trial and the passion of Jesus of Nazareth began. Jerusalem! The faithful city! She that was full of justice! has become a harlot! Master, what should we do? This woman has been caught in the act of adultery. She should be punished according to the law. What do you say? He among you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. The, the Romans have butchered hundreds of innocent people, young people, old people, lives ended without mercy, without trial. We must meet the sword with the sword. All who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. My heart is troubled and my mind confused. You must help me to see the truth. Except a man be born again, Nicodemus. He cannot see the kingdom of God. God so loved the world that he sent his own son whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life.
to Jerusalem. The crowd went wild on his arrival and we did nothing. No. He then drove the merchants and the sellers of beasts for sacrifices from the courtyard of the temple and we did not intervene. Yeah. How many times have we protested at the disgrace of money changers being allowed in the precincts of the temple? But then we allowed him to preach in the holy temple itself yeah. and no time. At no time did he recognize your authority, Caiaphas, nor made submission to the elders of Israel. So let us denounce him in the name of the people of Israel. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we have that right. Can we honestly say that we represent the true thoughts and aspirations of the people of Israel? What are you saying? I've often wondered if, as elders, we're not too cut off from them and from their real problems. How can we guide them if we don't know what's in their hearts? But without our guidance, they would be lost. The people, people will run after any new thing. That's why they've taken up with this man Jesus with his tricks and exaggerated promises. I have seen him. I've heard him preach. His words reach into men's hearts, not like ours. It's not the old ritual, the old formulas but a new vision which seems to answer all their hopes. A message of comfort, of goodness, of purity, of the virtues of humility. We've heard it all before, from John the Baptist and hundreds of others. And why not? Hmm? That is the richness of our religion, that it's always being kept alive by new ideas. Oh, that kind of thinking encourages false prophets. What an incredible people we are. Thirsty for knowledge, but hypocrites afraid of change. We say that we want new ideas so our religion will speak to each generation. And yet, when a prophet appears, burning with faith and fiery revelations, we stifle him. Shall we go down to history as a people who destroys its prophets? Yes, no, 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 please, no, brothers, please. Look, this is scarcely the time for philosophical uh, discussions. There are more urgent problems to be considered. He allows those who follow him to hail him as the Messiah. He's a blasphemer! He's an imposter! With respect to those more learned than I, there is one possibility that uh, it seems no one here is ready to consider. What is it? The possibility that Jesus of Nazareth may be, in fact, the Messiah awaited by our people. A carpenter from Galilee. This man has studied the prophecies and carefully and subtly he never misses a chance to identify himself with them. Exactly. I only know that like our brother Joseph, I've heard him preach I was moved, lifted out of myself, and seemed to see all things in a new and blinding light. I was aware of wonders, signs that God may be with him, and through him, with us. Realize what you are saying, Master Nicodemus. Let him speak. Listen to him. Let him speak. Don't shout him down. The coming of the Messiah is the heart of our faith. Why should he not come now? Why do we dream our liberator will be revealed in glory? A new Solomon, new David. Is God not allowed to choose whom he wishes? Even the son of a poor carpenter from Nazareth? David began life as a shepherd. Who are we to decide the way in which God should choose to help his people? We? Grains of sand, chaff blown in the wind. May the Lord open our eyes to his wisdom. Master Nicodemus, I have always respected you. How am I to understand your defense of this man? whose mission seems to be to divide our people. Even this noble assembly has been torn asunder by him. This Jesus of Nazareth must be an extraordinary man. But is there not one among you who understands the 
the real significance of this matter? It is not the Galileans' words that are important, or the so-called miracles. Even the fact that frenzied crowds hail him as the Messiah, it's, it's not important. The central core of this case is that this man dares to proclaim and I can hardly make myself say it. This man dares to proclaim himself that the Son of God. Master Nicodemus, in your uh, great faith and wisdom, and you, Joseph, most honest of men, can you tell us that in your heart of hearts you believe he is the Son of God, that he is equal to God, If he is not the Son of God, then who is this Jesus of Nazareth? Is he a prophet? Only a false prophet can assume the powers of God and say to persistent sinner, you are forgiven. Only God can forgive sins. All through our history, false prophets have been the plague of Israel. Yes. This man, while claiming to uphold the law, perverts our most fundamental beliefs. The Romans will not wait for us to find the answer. Our law says the prophet who claims to say in the name of God things which God has not commanded, that prophet must die. But if this man Jesus is a false prophet and a blasphemer, is it not better for one man to die than for a whole nation to perish? However, under Roman occupation, Caiaphas, the people of Israel may put a goat to death, but not a man. Thank you, Zira, for reminding us of our realities. Then he must be charged and found guilty by the Romans. But Caiaphas, we have not found him guilty yet. Surely our law does not condemn a man before first giving him a hearing before the elders of Israel? No matter how serious his offense, we cannot simply hand over one of our brothers to the Romans. Caiaphas, after the Passover, let me persuade Jesus to come to us and explain to us what is in his heart and his mind when he says he is the Son of God. Brethren, I agree. We will question him fully and give this Jesus of Nazareth every opportunity to, to defend himself. No! To delay would be too dangerous. We all know what steps Pilate would take against our people if the unrest continues. Zara, he must be taken tonight. It could cause even more trouble among the crowds if our temple guards go searching for him. It could be a long search. All over the city. No one knows where he and his followers are hiding. They stay no longer than one night in the same place. I think I know the way to reach him. Zira, don't forget. Jesus of Nazareth is one of our brothers.
Blessed be thou, Lord our God, who has blessed us with thy laws and made bread issue from the earth. From now on, this will no longer be the bread of the passage of our fathers from bondage to freedom. This Passover is for you today. The passage from the bondage of death to the freedom of life. This is the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread shall have eternal life. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. And if you love one another, all men shall know that you are my disciples. Son, that thy son may glorify thee. Keep in thy name those thou hast given. I do not pray for these only, but also for those who 
believe in me through their word. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. This is your hour, Judas. The hour of shadows. Oh, master. You betray your master. The only way the master can save himself is by speaking to the Sanhedrin. Take him away. Leave him alone! Leave him alone! Kill him! Oh. Jesus! Stop it, Andrew! Stop! Jesus! No, Peter! Get away, you scum! Arrest them all! Peter! It was me you sought. You have found me. 
Let them go. Take him away! Take him away! Take him away! Take him to the side! Peter or something! Peter or something! Where did they take him? Where have they taken him? He's the one who brought the soldiers. Sarah. 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 I must speak to Zara. I must speak to Zara. Is he in here? Did they bring him here? Who? Jesus! Master Zara, please. I don't understand this man. Zara. Zara. Yeah. Now, where is this meeting with Caiaphas? I must be there with Jesus. Meeting? There's no meeting. Uh huh? There's a trial. Your Jesus is accused of blasphemy. You've been an invaluable help to us, Judas. Come and see me when all this is over. you want it. So get out of here. Come on, get out of here. Move yourself. Master Joseph, we were coming to find you. This is Martha, the sister of Lazarus, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Jesus has been arrested. Yes, I know. I've been called to a meeting of the elders. You have such great influence in the Sanhedrin. Please, will you help me? I'll try. You know that. I'll do what I can. I've never understood how that liar could have fooled so many people. <laughs> you were one of those who believed in him, didn't you? Well, I admit I believed in him, but we all believed in him. And now you discover the truth. He said a lot of things that I liked very much. Oh, what? And he did some good things. Oh. Good things? They were tricks of the devil. All right, all right. We know that he was a liar and a blasphemer and he betrayed us. And now he will pay. Oh, come on. I'm sorry I had to wake you up at this hour of night. Master Nicodemus. that he should be found like a common thief. It's most unseemly, sir. Jesus, it is not our intention to treat you as a criminal. But we want you to explain to this assembly the nature of your teachings. What is this doctrine you and your disciples are spreading through Judea? I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have taught in the synagogues and in the temple. I have said nothing in secret. So, 
Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me. They are my witnesses. Caiaphas, I've heard him preach. I, I find nothing in his doctrine which denies the basic principles of our faith. Rabbi, we fail to understand the meaning of many of your sayings. For instance, there are witnesses who say that you claim that you could destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. No one could rebuild the temple in three days. What he said must have some symbolic meaning. Come. I'm sure I heard him say he could rebuild it again in two days. Three days, four days, you hear? Witnesses can't even agree. How can we remember every detail? There was a riot which Jesus himself provoked, but for which the Romans will hold us responsible. The riot was provoked by Barabbas. The Romans don't need an excuse. We know what they have done to our people. All of us here can remember. The occasion not so many years back when over a thousand of our people were nailed to the walls of Jerusalem because there were not enough scaffolds to satisfy the Romans' lust for blood. None of us, I'm sure, wants to give any more victims to Pontius Pilate than we can prevent. Of course not, Joseph. We're all agreed upon that. As Caiaphas has said, this is not a trial. We, we left our homes, we came here tonight, hoping that Jesus of Nazareth would explain to us the purpose of his mission and help to heal the divisions in our community. Brother, we have often heard that you've come to bring love and brotherhood. I beg you, bring peace to our gathering tonight. Tell me. It has been said that you proclaimed yourself the Son of God. I ask you now, in the name of the Eternal, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. We have heard enough. Let him be taken before the procurator Pontius Pilate whose hands lies the final authority for trial and judgment. Sending him to Pontius Pilate. <laughs> we know how that will end up, don't we? Wait a minute. I know you. You were with that Jesus. You're one of his followers. No, no I don't know him. But he is. Look. And I know him. He is one of his followers. Yes, I've seen him. I've seen him. No! He's a liar. No! Arrest him. I tell you, I don't know. I saw him. Please! What's going on here? 
He's a friend of Jesus, a disciple. Don't let him go. Oh, please. Mistaken. I know you know this Jesus they speak of, nor have I ever heard of him. Go. Just keep quiet here. Don't you know you're on <laughs> sacred ground? Barabbas. Uh, the crazy people, they should be in here. Your friends outside want you set free. So you can carry on with your murdering, I suppose. I'm not a murderer. I shouldn't be in with those two. I'm a patriot. You're all criminals. I don't think you're any different. It was him who did the murder, not me! Now he took me into it! It was his idea! He uh, uh, when will it be? When Pontius Pilate comes from Caesarea for the Passover, or whatever they call it. Hey, listen, you've got to let me out of here. Well, I didn't do anything. Listen to me! Welcome! I leave for one week and I come back and I find the mob clamoring in the street and you dare to say to me, Welcome! Who's this Barabbas they've been shouting about? He's a zealot we arrested. His followers have disturbed the crowds. I don't think their noise will disturb my judgment. Look, you take a hundred men and you clear the street. With respect, uh, Procurator. Please, I'm so tired. Jerusalem is full of people. There are many hotheads among them. Yes, and they'll cool when they see the example we make of their Barabbas. Pontius Pilate, I'm afraid there's another case which I must trouble you. Another one? Yes, it was submitted to us by the Sanhedrin itself. It concerns a certain Galilean preacher. Quintilius, I am not interested in their preachers or their prophets. You know that. Yes, of course, I know. The Sanhedrin, uh, whose uh, cooperation has been very useful to us, they consider it extremely important. Even urgent. Urgent! I'm sorry. Maybe next week. <laughs> First, we'll deal with the robbers. Pilot, there's a delegation from the Sanhedrin waiting outside. It is led by Zera himself. 
they have this uh, this preacher, this Jesus of Nazareth, with them. They they want you to judge him. Judge him? Is that him, sir? That must be important. No, 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 no. I don't want to get involved in their religious quarrels. Mm. This is the monthly report of the province. I think it's wise not to offend them unnecessarily. I think you should see them. Well, they haven't brought in. Don't stand there, bring them in. Uh, Pilot, I regret, I'm afraid we must go out to them. We must go to them? Yes, uh, according to their beliefs, uh, well, they cannot come into a house of a Roman. Not on Passover. They would be defiled. <laughs> defiled. I forgot about that. All right. We'll go to them. Bring them to the Great Hall. How does one govern such people? Procurator, we have found that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, distorts our people's views on the relationship between God and the state. Furthermore, he perverts the very heart of our religion. I'm not concerned with people who break your religious laws. My function as governor here is to keep the peace and administer Roman justice. We know that, Procurator. But this man also threatens the established order. If he were not a criminal, we would not have brought him to you. He calls himself the Christ, which means the anointed one. <laughs> Thank you. I too know some Greek. Well, what else has he done? Has he spoken against the Emperor? Has he spoken against Rome? Well, Procurator, not directly, no, but... Not directly? Then he's your problem. You'll have to judge him according to your law. Procurator. For us, this man, Jesus, is a blasphemer. If we were a self-governing nation, we would have the right to exact punishment, which under the law of Moses is laid down for blasphemy. He made a triumphal entry into Jerusalem, calling himself the King of the Jews. A claim which we totally reject. King of the Jews. Well, whatever else he may have done, such a claim is treason. True, true, all right, all right. I'll talk to him. <laughs> Your Jesus. Not ours. Then whose? Whose? Bring him in! Is this the man you think so dangerous? This? The man that aspires to be a king? Come. Come, come, come! Now. The leaders of the Sanhedrin accuse you of Preaching perverted doctrines. Come. They also say you call yourself the King of the Jews. Well, are you King of the Jews? My kingdom were of this world, my followers would have fought to 
prevent me from being captured. Oh, you speak of a kingdom. Therefore, you must be a king. Are you a king? I am. I was born for one purpose. To bear witness to the truth. All who can accept the truth hear my voice. And what is the truth? <laughs> no, this man's no criminal. He's a dreamer. Take him away, take him away. Have him flogged as a token of Roman justice. That should wake him up. Right, sir. Procurator. We, <coughs> the leaders of the Sanhedrin, have always had the same aim as you. The peaceful administration of our country for the good of our people. And for many oh, years... please, please, people. please, please. Don't talk to me about the people. As long as they obey, you care as much about your children of Israel as we do the mob in Rome. Hmm. No, Sarah. Let us speak directly. Why does the Sanhedrin consider this man so dangerous that they send you yourself here to make sure that he's condemned. Perhaps for the same reasons as you, Procurator, if you knew him as well as we do, would also find him dangerous. back up. Majesty! <laughs> oh, look at him! I have it! A king's crown! <laughs> look what he's got! He's got his crown! <laughs> You need a scepter. Majesty! A perfect fit, your Where's majesty! Your throne, eh? <laughs> oh, now he's the king. <laughs> Tiberius will be getting worried.
Hit che ho mo. Behold the man. Well, what have you got to say for yourself now? Speak! Isn't there an ancient custom honoring Passover where the procurator can release a prisoner sentenced to death as an act of mercy? Yes, that custom still exists. And we have two prisoners? Barabbas? And Jesus. So let the people decide. I've made my decision. The people will decide. Take him away. Right, take this one away. Get down to the prison now and bring Barabbas. Barabbas! Remember Barabbas! Good! Here, here, here! Listen to me! Listen! You two! Listen! When I give you the cue, you shout for Barabbas. Barabbas is depending on you. Barabbas has fought for you. Don't betray him. Shout for Barabbas. No, you must save Jesus. He's a righteous man. When did they arrest him? Late last night. The garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane? That's near where I live. We must be prepared. Barabbas must be freed at all cost. Now look, we put our men all over. Do you understand? At a given sign. But he could understand what he wanted. Leave that to temple. As a sign of his magnanimity and his benevolence, our divine emperor has decided 
that the custom of releasing one prisoner sentenced to death in honor of your Passover shall continue. We have two prisoners. One, Jesus of Nazareth, accused of treason by proclaiming himself King of the Jews. Do you work a miracle now, Jesus? <laughs> Anyone shouting for that false prophet had better watch out. Look at him, the King of the Jews. What's happened to him? Call yourself a king? Or oh. Barabbas, accused of sedition and murdering a Roman auxiliary. <laughs> Of the two shall be released to you. Jesus of Nazareth. We cannot let this happen. We must do guilty something. of proclaiming himself King of the Jews. No, he wears a crown. Oh. Barabbas. Barabbas! Release Jesus! He is the true prophet! We can't let Barabbas get away. Yes. The soldiers won't like Wait. that. The pilot, you're not going to free Barabbas. An assassin, an enemy of Rome. I wonder who is the real enemy. To be crucified.
Not the justice of the Roman Empire. <laughs> <laughs> get back, get back, make way! They do. If you're what you say you are, if you're the Messiah, why don't you save yourself? Hmm? And us, leave him alone. Don't you fear God, even when you are dying? We deserve to die, for we 
are receiving the just punishment for our crimes. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Today, you will be with me in paradise. his mother. Well, how can you prove it? Hey. She is his mother. Go to him. And who are you? Please. I'm one of the family. Is that right? Yes. He is one of the family. Good. The Romans won't let you get close. Others. Why can't he save himself now?
Listen. Listen, he's calling on the prophet Elijah. No, he's not calling Elijah. He's quoting the scriptures. Even now, nailed to the cross, he quotes the scriptures. Even now. He was despised and rejected of men, man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is done. He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and affliction. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was abused for our iniquities. And through his wounds, we are healed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, you, the family, come on, you can take the body. A tomb has already been provided by a prominent member of your faith who doesn't wish his name to be revealed. Pontius Pilate gave permission before he went back to Caesarea. Yes, yes, yes. But you don't understand why. Why should you? It is of vital importance to us to know where this tomb is. With all due respect, why is it of such importance? The man is dead. Well, since you ask, there have been rumors of this Jesus arising from the dead. Huh. You believe this? Huh. But it may prevail upon the superstitious. His followers could easily remove the body secretly, and then they can talk of having witnessed the resurrection. Yeah. Therefore, can the tomb be guarded? No, there's nothing to stop you guarding it. No, there isn't, but it must be carried out by you Romans. Why? Well, if we use our own temple guards, his disciples could say that he truly rose, but that his enemies denied it. What sort of person are you, if I may ask? Huh? His death is not enough for you. I think your procurator, if he were here, would agree with me when I say This Jesus could be much more dangerous now that he's dead. Therefore, I should be grateful if something could be arranged. Very well, then. A Roman guard will be posted. Where are you going? We are the family of Jesus of Nazareth. Who lies here? What do you want? To enter the tomb. Why? To anoint the body. To bring fresh linen, herbs, spices. It is our custom. Why didn't you do that when you brought him here? The Sabbath began. We could not buy them. What do you think? Now, there are only three women. Let them go. I suppose it'll be all right then. 
You'll need an army to move that stone. All right, then. Let's go together. But we'll need some help. Hey, Lentulus, wake up! Come with us! Marcus, you watch the bridge! I think we should call those priests, too. Are they still around? Where are you going? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus is not there. by Jupiter yes, and Hercules, yes, Mars. Yes, you've been awake all night and haven't moved from the spot. That's right. You were given strict orders. Nobody's been near that tomb. And those Jewish priests, or whatever they are, were with us all the time. Well then, who moved the stone? Who is it? Me, Philip. Did anyone follow you? No. Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure. Are they still looking for us? On every corner, one sees temple guards and Roman soldiers. This place isn't safe anymore. We must go somewhere else. But where can we go? I wish we could go to Galilee. Peter. Peter. Tell us. What should we do? We must do what the Master would have wanted. The Master's dead, Peter. I thought you said you weren't followed. I wasn't. Mary. Peter. All of you. I have seen him. Seen who? The master. You've seen him? Yes. He is risen. I saw him. I saw him. This morning, we went to the tomb. And near the tomb was a man. And a young boy. And the man said to me, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. So we went to the tomb and we saw the stone was upturned. The grave. The tomb was open. We looked for him. He was not there. You mean the master's body wasn't there? Has it been stolen? No, no, no. Let me finish. When we were leaving the cemetery, I saw another man. He saw how distraught we were. He said, woman, why do you weep? And then he said my name. Mary. Mary. And it was then that I saw. It was Jesus. I fell to my knees and I reached for him. Touch me not. 
For I have not yet ascended to my father, he said. But go to my brothers and tell them. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. I tell you, I saw him. It was our Lord. Mary, Mary. John. Oh, John. You don't believe me. You. Mary, you're tired. Please. Please go. I saw him, John. I saw him. Women's fantasies. Fantasies? Was his death a fantasy? I saw him die. I was there and I wept at his feet. Why should he not then appear to me? He is risen. told me to tell you. And I have done so. You wouldn't believe her. Even when the master raised Jairus' daughter, you didn't believe it. What do you mean? You believe her story. Do any of you believe it? Do you, Andrew? Do you, James? And you, Matthew? Do you, Peter? you because he said so because he wanted it to be so he wanted everything to happen just as it did and i have always believed him but peter you denied him. You denied him three times. Yes! I denied him because I was a coward. We are all cowards. We accused Judas of being a traitor, but we all betrayed him. We all abandoned him. At least our brothers in the Sanhedrin who condemned him didn't know him. The Romans. They did not know him. But we. We ate with him. We lived with him. We knew he was the Christ. And still we betrayed him. Brothers, don't you, can't you see? Yes. <laughs> you asked me if I believe he's risen. Yes, I do. For I know in my heart he will not abandon us. I know in my heart he has forgiven me. <laughs> Us. Forgiven 
all of us. This is precisely what I feared. His disciples must have come in the night, removed the stone and taken away the body. Possible. I had guards here, as you requested. And your priests were here, too. written, the Son of Man will suffer, and on the third day will rise again from the dead to enter his glory. You are my witnesses to this. Now my Father in heaven is reconciled to the world. as he sent me. So I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Go like lambs among wolves. Make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them the gospel and the commandments I gave you. Now, I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. Stay with us. For the night is falling, and the day is almost over. Don't be afraid. I am with you every day till the end. 